Welcome Protege. So in project two, we interfaced a keypad and an LED bar graph to the Uno Rev 3. Now in project three, we're going to remove the LED bar graph, but keep the keypad. And this time, instead of sending the output to the bar graph, we're going to send the output to the serial monitor that is part of the Arduino IDE. So first I'm just going to remove these jumpers. If you can, keep the LED bar graph on the breadboard because we're going to use that in project four. And if you don't have the keypad already wired up, go ahead and do that. I already have the jumpers connected to columns one through four and the jumpers connected to rows one through four. Now on the, when we connect it to the Uno Rev 3, we're going to switch up the, the input and output pins a little. In project two, we connected some of the columns to pins zero and one. But we don't want to use that because we're using the serial monitor. So we're just going to switch the inputs and outputs over by two pins. For example, column one of the keypad will now go to pin two on the Uno Rev 3. So once this, your keypad is wired up, we can place it in the fuel can. And now we can start wiring the columns and rows of the keypad. And again, we want to, we want to start at pin two this time for column one. Now we have the column pins hooked up. Next, let's go ahead and connect the row pins. And row one will connect to pin six. So now we have our keypad wired up. So let's go ahead and go to the software. Now we're going to walk you through the code. Similar to project two, we have the variable declarations where we have a variable for each key on the keypad and we initialize that to zero. Our void setup is a little different since now we're writing the data to a serial monitor. We have to set up the serial channel which is done by using a function called serial.begin and it takes in one argument which is the something called the baud rate, which is the bits per second of that communication channel. And in this case, it's 9,600. Next, we want to set pins two to five as an output. And I use a for loop just to get rid of some redundant code. So I have a variable i that goes from two to less than six, and then I increment i by one. And then when we go inside the for loop, we set the pins as output. Next, I have a similar for loop, but instead of sending the pins as output, we set the pins as input, and we're setting pins six through nine as an input. Next, we have our void loop function. We have the same idea of setting each column high sequentially. So first we set column one high, and then we do reads on each row. But when we go inside of the if statement, instead of setting the outputs on the LED, we use a function called serial.println, and then we pass in the, the number that we want to send to the serial monitor. And you'll notice that when sending, when sending the number, we use serial.println, but when sending text such as the asterisk or the pound symbol, we use serial.print. When we use serial.println, it automatically appends a new line character at the end. But when we use serial.print, we have to add an extra, extra line of code to add the extra new line character. Next, I'll pull up the serial monitor. And to do that, you go under Tools. Then Serial Monitor, there's also a shortcut by hitting Control-Shift-M. Now, since we set the baud rate to 9600 in the code, we want to make sure that the baud rate is also set to 9600 here. 
If the baud rates aren't the same between the transmitter and the receiver, then your data will get corrupted and you won't be able to read it. So I'll start hitting some keys on the keypad. And we get all of the outputs to display correctly in the serial monitor. And watch what happens when I change the baud rate to something a lot faster, say 19,200. We start getting corrupt data. And that's because the host is sampling the data a lot faster than it should be. So let me go ahead and change this back to 9,600. And I also want to show you something where we disconnect the pull down resistors on the row side of the keypad. And in project two, I mentioned something about the floating inputs to the Uno Rev 3. And now I'm going to show you what happens when we do have a floating input. So I disconnected the pull down resistors. And since those pins are floating, it's noticing that each input is transitioning from low to high and high to low. So that's why we're, we keep seeing data being displayed on the screen. So once we connect the pull down resistors, we get rid of those floating input pins. And that's it for this project. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe below or leave a question or comment.